traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, looking good. Billy Ray, feeling good, Lewis. I posted the chart of the daily gold chart that we've been looking at at 1839. The low yesterday was 1838.60. But uh, early this morning, it's around 3 o'clock in the morning, Tucson time. I usually start around 3.30. For some reason, I got up a half hour earlier and I was watching the gold market. And I was also watching the Treasury bonds and Treasury notes, so I had to send out special videos. And I wanted to share those uh, with you this morning because it's an idea uh, of how I uh, you know, plan my day and what I look for because my focus on all of these patterns is risk control. I, I never uh, have believed that I know anything any more than that, so that's the advantage that I have, that I know what these patterns mean and when they fail – it's very important to know that also. So I don't delude myself to thinking that I know what the heck the future is going to bring because I don't. And you know what, boys and girls, nobody else does either. So you can see that daily chart here on the gold. Now, what I wanted to do is walk through what we were watching here last night. Now, here's here's where we were. This was, uh, of course, an update of that. But I wanted to get this after I mentioned in the video. I said because we had only uh, made this little 382 right here i said there was still a high probability that we would go down and make another low and the reason why is that's the place where the stops are placed and as you can see it takes out the stop by a buck or two and then it rallies and now we've rallied back up to that 382 level again in fact this first rally that we had was 17 dollars you can see the abcd right there that was a 382 off the previous high where the 382 was up here at 1877 and so what we're looking at now is a market that's trying to make a bottom in this area so i said folks if it makes a new low i said don't be surprised i said but keep the stop working at least five dollars under that which would your stop would have been at 532 the low was 536 okay and so now we've had the rally and now you move your stop up to near the break-even point because uh, we have made a new low, and that was mainly due to what was going on with the two-year and the 30-year Treasury notes and bonds because, you know, they exploded to the uh, – detonated to the downside. And, uh, and then, of course, they hit some pretty nice uh, support levels. So that's all I'm doing when I'm doing these things is to man managing my risk the best way that I can in order to get an entry as best I can see it with a small amount of risk because I know we're going to catch some big ones. It's a question is we don't want to catch a whole lot of little ones in a row that you lose on. And so far, you know, that's been uh, – the statistics have been on our side. And that's what we're what we're really trying to do. Now, let's take a look here at the bonds and notes. You know that we've been talking about this particular pattern here in the bonds yesterday. I, I recommended, you know, we were we were looking in those bonds and I said to be buying them at uh, 12606. That was right at the 78 percent level. It rallied up to one one oh one twenty six twenty two and didn't go anywhere. And when we were still on the road, uh, still on the program yesterday, I said, this is not acting well. So let's just scratch the trade and get out of it and wait to see what happens. But the reasoning why I was looking at that is, you remember, the bonds have two components. Uh, well, there's, a, there's the, the short-term rates or T-bill rates. These are the ones that are from, you know, three months to uh, a year are T-bills, from two years to uh, uh, two years to uh, – 10 years are the 10-year notes, and then 10-year to 30 years are the 20-year uh, notes and also the 30-year bonds. The notes are the most actively traded. There are six times more open interest in the 10-year 
Treasury notes than there are in the 30-year bonds. The difference is the value of each tick in the Treasury note is one half of the value in the Treasury bond. So each tick in notes is 13, uh, 1625, whereas each tick in the S in the in the big bond is 31 and a quarter. So anyway, that's that's what we're paying attention to as we're looking at that. So I was watching both of those together. And as you can see here, we had some really strong support there at 126.06. But but if you took a look at what was happening in the Treasury notes, you're going to see something totally different. And this is what we were focusing on because we had a we knew that there was a report coming out. We didn't know what the report was going to mean, but we did have some information going for us. Now, this may or may not work, but this is about as perfect as you can possibly get. You'll see from the low we made back here two months ago, we've just made a 61% retracement in the Treasury notes today. Remember, now the Treasury notes are taking out this low, whereas the Treasury bonds are still above that high. So this is telling you that the Treasury notes they have they're they're the leader of the pack because this is interest rates, mortgage, car loans, all that stuff, credit cards, all of it comes off of the the value of these of these notes. So that's why it's so very very important. Well, we went down to the exact tick today, folks. Uh, we went one tick below it. We said to buy it right at that spot, which it did. It went one tick below it, rallied a little bit, came down and made a lower low by another tick. Still right in that ballpark, and then finally had a, a very well, a moderately strong rally. We rallied a half a point up to that level. But the important part is, folks, if we close below this level right here, which is the low of the day, and the low of the day on those Treasury notes uh, came in at uh, 111.20, where they're trading at 111.29 right now. And uh, that's only up nine ticks. But stop and think, folks. Nine ticks in, in the, one of the, lar the largest open interest of any commodity we trade is a lot of money. So that, that's equivalent to, uh, you know, it's about 500 bucks. Uh, well, actually, no, actually, it's equivalent to $250. But that's a lot in the Treasury note market. So that's, this is an important place. The second thing, if you look at that chart on the Treasury notes, you'll notice the high from December into Christmas was 13 days down and guess what the high was from february the second to where we are today 13 days down so you have really beautiful symmetry setting exactly at the 61 percent retracement right there at 111.21 uh, the low being 111 uh, 20 111.19 so you know you stop here is just one tick below that because if we go below that something is wrong and you don't want to stand in front of it because these give you some idea of what risk control is, but that is where it ends. We know the probability is there, and we know that they repeat. That's correct. But the one thing we don't know is how much we have to risk on a trade, and that's what the patterns will tell us to do. So if you, if you believe in that number, and if you do believe in that number, that's what you want to go for. Look at the gold, folks. We went to 1839. The low has been 1837, just $2.00 below that level. I mean, that's nothing in a contract that's trading at $180,000. Hello, operator. I mean, that's that's peanuts. That's all we were looking at this morning was the fact that the market hadn't moved all day yesterday. It could not move more than a half a harmonic number, which is $17 uh, an ounce. That's the half harmonic, 30, 34 in the gold. Now, what we're going to do, speaking of harmonics, I can hear the old bell ringing, and we're going to take a break, 877 Nine two seven six six four eight. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously 
When you sign up for the Tiger Forex Report, you also gain instant access to Teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted, Forex Strategies and Fundamentals, What is Behind the Tiger Forex Report. For all the details and to start your 30-day Tiger Forex Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. now toll free at 1-877-927-6648 internationally at 727-873-7618 Okay, we're back, folks. I posted a chart of the E-mini S&P for educational purposes here. I wanted you to notice this. This was uh, what was happening last night, and uh, we had just completed that ABCD pattern right at the 78% level. And, uh, you know, I mentioned that we were setting, I said, watch for the 382 retracement of this move right here. Now, this came in at uh, 4147. And we stayed there for about 15 minutes. And what happened was it happened to be exactly within a minute or two when that report came out at 8 o'clock uh, New York time. And that's when the market broke. And I said, if we do not hold that, uh, you know, 382 retracement, I said, this market is most probably going to go down quite a bit. And, of course, what it did, as you can see, it completed the ABCD pattern. We can see it more clearly when we do the next update of this because this gives you a better idea of what's going on and also what just happened and it just is happening just now as we were speaking here get this up here and we'll be able to see it here's where we are and there you are there's what we did we came right down to the ABCD that's the 707 number there's your 61 percent retracement there's a 707, which is the reciprocal of the square root of 2, 1.414, square root of 2. Now, if you look at this, you can see the A, B, C, D pattern coming in right there. And this is where the rally should have come up here, right around at 18, 18, 40, 41, 43, 41, 44 level was the 382 level. Well, we just hit that. And uh, we had, I think we hit 43 or something like that, and we just started to back off. Now, this is the key point, folks, because now this is where the structure of the market can change. If we only get to this 382 retracement, and it has to get above, in order to break it, it's got to get above uh, 4150. If it gets above 4150, then it's got a chance to have a pretty good run to the upside. Right now, it's trading at 4135. So that's still quite a ways 
you know, from what we're looking at here. So that's why that's very important. But let me let me give you a little bit of happiness to me because I have, you know, several uh, folks that are learning this stuff along the way. And in fact, I get emails quite a bit from JS and also JD. And it really, it, it makes my day because they're starting to see all the things that I'm teaching and they're seeing it ahead of time. And that's what makes me the happiest. And this one comes from JD. I wanted to bring it up and show you now all, all he was, he's just, he's he's uh, been doing this for quite a while, but he's just into the harmonics and the cycles and he's starting to see it clearly. And that makes my job really easy because once he starts to see it, two things happen. His learning curve goes exponential because he's starting to see it for the first time. And the second thing is that the most important, it becomes his, not mine. All the things that I've taught here, folks, I mean, I, made it, I might have given them names like butterflies and gartleys. All that stuff came from other people that I had seen and found little nuances in it to help explain it a little better. That's all it is. I'm not saying that anything that I've done here, I mean, the ABCD pattern has been around God knows how long, probably within the old Chinese rice traders thousands of years ago. But we know it was available to the, uh, you know, the uh, Babylonians and Sumerians because they were using the planetary things, and that's where all this stuff comes from. But as you can see, he was just using a nice little cycle tool, giving you an idea of the timing of some of these things. And that's all it is. You're trying to add to an edge of what you're looking at. But the ones that really were important was you're going to see the same chart that I just gave you. It's a little different time frame, but it is exactly the same chart that I was looking at as I had sent it out beforehand, and he was already one step ahead of me and already seen it. And that's what that's what makes my day because now I know he's really close. You can see he's got the big ABCD patterns in here. He sees the relationships. Uh, he's did everything right, and that's all. And all you have to do is if you can do this, you can know what your risk is because when they fail, and they will fail, you know that you've got something on your side that will really get you moving you know, in the, in the right direction. And that's all. Do we know whether these are going to work or not? No one ever knows that. And, you know, that's all you all you can do is do the probabilities. Now, you remember, folks, we were we were short soybeans yesterday. And one of the things we had a really nice move down in soybeans. And so one of the things that we looked at on the early morning call this morning was, OK, we're going to take profits in soybeans and we're going to assume that we're going to get a 382 retracement back in the March soybeans. And if we get there, we want to sell it back. And as you can see, it did exactly that right there and then of course it's coming down getting ready to make new lows again so on this particular one you got your stop at break even and uh, we're able to uh, get a little bit of each side of the market now that doesn't always happen that way but it happens more often than not and that's the main thing you know that you've got to remember it's all about probability it's all about risk control it's never about certainty it never will be and don't ever think that it will but you you're just never going to happen now I've got to share with you uh, some inside information. It's a sort of a joke between John Jameson and I, but uh, John Jameson does not like Microsoft. Uh, but I have to tell you, he changed his mind today, and I have to bring this chart up and show you. Uh, he is extremely bullish. This chart, start this chart, <coughs> this stock, Microsoft. Okay, you'll see here the perfect symmetry here in Microsoft. You can see the ABCD right at the 78% level. You can see this right here. You notice the market has not sold off very much like it did from this level right here. John has told me that they have an AI program uh, that helps uh, writers uh, get over writer's block. And John says it's the most exciting program. And John has been in computers since 1986, folks, when he was just a kid. He was 22, I think. And uh, he's been doing it his whole life. He worked for Hewlett Packard, IBM. Siemens, I mean, he's traveled all over the world giving lectures on infrastructure of, of programs and stuff. And uh, he is really excited about this artificial intelligence program that Microsoft has. He says it puts them so far ahead of the rest of the world that uh, he said you just can't can imagine. So what we're watching here is to see if we get a 382 retracement here uh, in Microsoft because he, he really believes this is, he said this was equivalent to the iPhone is basically is what he said and I when he tells something like that I gotta pay attention to it I hey folks time out here for a second I know diddly squat about Microsoft uh, and anyway 
And of course, Bill Gates hasn't been involved with Microsoft for many years now, but he said this program is really a life-changing program. So I, I don't know much about it, but you know, I'm going to listen to what he says because that's his field and he knows what he's talking about. So we'll see uh, where it comes from there. By the way, our guest today will be Jeff Huge of Alpha Insights, always a fun guest to have on, and we like to uh, welcome him in about uh, five or six minutes. He'll be coming on as our guest. The main thing today, folks, is to remember if we make new lows now in Treasury notes and new lows in Treasury bonds, those are failed patterns. And if we go below those lows again one more time in the gold market, that's also going to be a failed pattern. That's why your stop has got to be setting there at around 1836. And, uh, you know, I, I don't know where we're trading. Last time I ch thought it was, well, it's actually bounced up a little bit. We're up about seven bucks, I see, in gold now uh, at 1852. So it's working, uh, you know, in the right direction. Also, if we close above 1450, uh, in the E-mini S&P, that's going to be a good sign. So we're going to stay tuned for Jeff Huge, Alpha Insights, folks. 877-927-6648. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, we're back, folks, and I believe we have Jeff Huge of Alpha Insights on the line today. Jeff, how are you doing? I'm doing well, Larry. Great to be here. It's always good to have you, my friend. How you like this volatility? Up one day, down the next, interday, thousands of dollar swings. It's almost like trading pork bellies at the CME. 
<laughs> you got to be on your toes, don't you? Sure. Tell us about this. You're using it. They're looking at Treasury yields this morning. Of course, we had a big move in those this morning. What are you looking at here, Jeff? Well, Larry, my uh, current um, conclusion is that the market is being driven by a number of macro factors right now. And we've identified several major trend reversals, and we put out alerts on that over the weekend on Sunday night to our subscribers. Um, this particular chart takes a look at Treasury notes and uh, yields, rather, I should say. And um, I wanted to point out that Treasury note prices actually began a bottoming process back in mid-October, and that was actually completed in early November when the two-year Treasury yield reached about 473. Now, mm -hmm. T-notes continued to rally pretty steadily in the mid-January until Treasury yields bottomed on January 18th. Now, that low was actually followed by a higher low on February 2nd across the belly of the curve, as you can see in this chart. Mm -hmm. We're looking at, you know, twos to tens, twos, fives, and ten-year yields here. And, you know, at the end of the day, that occurred just as the S&P 500 made its intraday recovery rally high on February 2nd. So Treasury yields since that point have reversed higher, and they've penetrated above trend resistance in all three instances. And in the case of two-year yields and five-year yields, we've actually penetrated above chart resistance as well. And so, you know, this pullback to around the 200-day moving average or so, suggest that this was just a corrective, uh, you know, process in this advance. And so we believe that uh, we'll probably see new highs in rates across the curve, and that could occur over the course of the next several weeks and months. Wow, that's really, I tell you, when I look at these charts, it just makes it such a uh, prevalent case of higher interest rates are on the way for sure. Now, the next one is very interesting because uh, – uh, we watch the U.S. dollar through the euros, the eyes of the euro all the time. And uh, you want to tell us what you're looking at here and the U.S. dollar, yeah, Jeff? Absolutely. So, you know, the U.S. dollar actually topped the head of Treasury yields uh, back in late September. Just as the stock markets were beginning to make their bear market lows, they kind of made a, a low in late September and then a final low in mid-October. And, um, you know, the, the subsequent advance that we saw – uh, and stock prices was actually attended by a very aggressive decline in the U.S. dollar, which subsequently bottomed on February 2nd, down 13 percent. And again, that was coincident with the top in the S&P 500 in terms of this rally. And so, you know, the U.S. dollar has since reversed higher to penetrate above chart resistance, uh, recovery of the 50-day moving average, and also penetration above um, uh, both trend and chart resistance. I think I mentioned one of those. But, you know, at the end of the day, while stock prices are continuing to hold above their chart support level, that's the bottom frame of this uh, uh, chart, you know, the U.S. dollar strength from here, if it were to continue, probably suggests that, that stocks are poised to roll over here. And I'd also throw out a number to you. You might recognize this number. It's 377. 377 uh -huh. is the 13th number in the Fibonacci sequence. And yes. if you actually look at the 377-day moving average, you'll see that the dollar stopped dead in its tracks there, just as the stock market stopped dead in its tracks there. And so we think that has something to do with this. Well, 377 means a whole lot to me because when I came out with my first book, Astro Cycles, A Trader's Viewpoint, I offered the book plus one year of the daily update uh, for uh, $377, and that's derived by you take – uh, 1, 2, 3, 5, 18, 31, 21, uh, 34, 55, 89, uh, 234, and then all the way out to 377. And that's how I came up with that, uh, that number. That was actually given to me by a, a dermatological uh, surgeon in uh, New York City. He was a big Fibonacci mm -hmm. believer. And he said, price it like that. And boy, that was the best price I ever had. And instead of <laughs> selling one book, I sold four and got a, it was a great business for a while. Yes, it were, it wore it wore me to death for four years. So I finally had to stop it. <laughs> I was just working too hard. <laughs> Okay, let's take a look at WCI we, or WTI crude oil. That's always one of our favorites. Yeah, so WTI right now appears to have 
kind of a, 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 a reversal trend potential as well. Um, if you take a look at the lower panel, you'll see that momentum appears to be turning up. This is the MACD. And what we saw when the market rolled over from its highs around 130, um, the MACD peaked and rolled over. And so we think we're getting that reversal of momentum. Interestingly, uh, if we look at the advance off the March-April 2020 lows into the March 2022 highs, that occurred in five waves. And we've, we've actually retraced 50% of that advance in three waves down. And it now appears that we've got a consolidation pattern right at the 200-day exponential moving average. If we are to break out above $83 and sustain that breakout, it actually projects to about 125, Larry. And we would recommend traders use a stop loss of around 73. That gets you back below that 200-day. We think that's a good place to stop out if this thing fails. Uh -huh. uh, but a, a breakout above 83 could get you 125. Well, that's a six to one payoff if that's right, but that's a big one. That's a very strong bottoming formation too. You can see the the higher bottoms over the last several uh, weeks. That's a very important thing, I would think too. So it gives you some support uh, to look at. That that's very interesting. Uh, what uh, do you ever do? You follow the heating oil? We have a specialist that comes on our program here, Mike Moore of Moore Analytics, and he says that the heating oil is a leading indicator uh, for the WTI. And uh, of course, that's his business because he does the crack spreads and all that other stuff. But do you have you ever have have you ever looked at that at all, Jeff? I've looked at it, but not recently. I'm not an expert on the uh, relationship yeah. between heating oil and crude, but um, I do think that there's a supply demand imbalance that's developing. Uh, you can see that Russia just cut uh, their production by half a half a million barrels a day, and China is coming back online. Um, a lot of people got a little, um, you know, got, got their um, uh, a, a bee in their bonnet when they saw that um, uh, supplies, you know, uh, inventories went up. But that was just a change in the calculation, you know. And so okay. we didn't really actually see inventories increase. It was just the way that they arrived at that calculation. I think the reality is um, there's a strong fundamental case for higher crude. Okay, now we're going to be talking about momentum topping. Uh, that certainly looks like that to me. What are you showing here in this chart, well, momentum topping? Yeah, so we've looked at this from time to time, and this is a daily chart of the S&P 500 with its 10-day uh, 10, 10 exponential moving average uh, running along it. And then on the bottom path, we see the deviation above and below that 10-day moving average. And it gives us an indication of whether momentum is accelerating or decelerating. And, and oftentimes when you see stock prices make a new high, but it's not attended by higher momentum, that negative divergence indicates a turning point or a trend reversal in the, the primary price index, in this case, the S&P 500. And I think we just saw the largest multi-month negative divergence that we've seen over the last year. And I think that could be key wow. to identifying a trend reversal in stocks. Great. Stay with us, Jeff. we got another segment. Jeff Huge, Alpha Insights, folks. We'll be right back. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. 
David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Okay, we're back, folks. We're speaking with Jeff Hughes of Alpha Insights, and we're going to be talking about the volatility bottoming. What are you looking at here, Jeff? Well, this is a, um, a chart of the VIX going back to around March of 2020, so looking back three years. And we could see a, an interesting pattern evolving, and it looks something like an inverted head and shoulders bottoming pattern uh, in the VIX itself. And one thing that we've noticed is that you know, when the VIX index gets above 24 percent, it, it's kind of uh, an, an, an ignition switch that really launches volatility substantially higher. And we've also noticed that when um, the VIX itself gets overbought significantly, uh, it tends to precede a big launch higher in volatility. Well, we've seen um, a couple things develop here in recent weeks. Uh, since the December low in the VIX, we've seen a lower low uh, show up here in February. Meanwhile, if we take a look at the uh, RSI in the bottom, it's actually put in higher lows, so a positive momentum divergence following that deep oversold condition back in November, December. And we think we're, we're already seeing um, the volatility index turn up above the 21-day moving average. It's pulled back since it broke out, but that's, that's typical as long as it doesn't make a new low. Um, I think the switch has been flipped. As soon as we get above 24%, that should really accelerate volatility. And we think we're going to see a breakout this time above that 34 36% range, possibly above 40%, which we haven't print, printed in over two years. But I do think we're on the cusp of a new volatility spike uh, on the horizon in the next uh, few days, weeks ahead. Um, so the point is, volatility is poised to reverse here as well. Wow, very interesting. I love to see these charts because, you know, I don't look at these uh, exotic indicators. But the next one, of course, is the most exotic of all, and that is the Elliott Wave Analysis. And you do a great job at this. So tell the folks what your interpretation of the Elliott Wave is right here, Jeff. Yeah, You're so still bearish, am I correct? Down. I am, yeah. So, yeah, okay. so our preferred count shows that uh, the market bottomed in June in five waves and rallied into the August high in three waves. And those two uh, segments are primary wave one down and primary wave two up. And what we've seen ever since the August 16th high is primary wave three down and its subdivisions. The decline into the October low was intermediate wave one and the rally into the February 2nd high so far is intermediate wave two. 
We think intermediate wave three of primary wave three or a third of a third wave decline is imminent. And a breakdown below, say, uh, 4,060 in the S&P 500 would confirm it. One interesting thing is we've put the 75-week moving average. This is on the left-hand side of the screen. Um, and that 75-week moving average is actually 377 divided by 5. Okay, so another Fibonacci relationship, uh, 5 also being a Fibonacci number, and, um, you know, it's representing five days of the week. So we've created that 377 day moving average into a weekly moving average of 77 weeks. And it stopped, um, you know, the initial decline. It stopped the initial advance and it stopped the current advance in its tracks. And if it holds, it will confirm our preferred count. The alternate assumes that rather than uh, the, the June low being the end of primary wave one, the October low represented the end of primary wave one. We don't like this count as much because it breaks one of Elliott's rules, which means that um, it's probably wrong, but it, it, it kind of almost is, is perfect. And, and what this would suggest is there's possibly as much room to about, say, 4310 on the upside. You hit that 618 retracement of the entire decline from the Jan 4th, 2022 high to the October 13th, 2022 intraday low. And that would suggest a little bit more gas in the tank before primary wave three down kicks in. But, you know, I, I like the preferred count better. And I think we're in the midst of, of uh, wave three decline right now. This last chart is the four hour chart. That That's really descriptive. It looks like we are ready to go uh, to go lower. I think all we have to do is break that 4060 and we should, uh, should start to see an acceleration. That's what I'm seeing, uh, Larry. I mean, the reason I like this count so much is that it's a clear three-wave advance. We mark it WXY because in Elliott Wave parlance, this is a double zigzag uh, corrective wave form. It's the second most probable uh, Elliott form that there is. And, um, you know, if we're, for where we are in this count, this looks like we saw an initial decline into um, minute wave one down back on uh, February 7th and an ABC flat wave correction into uh, the recent high, I think, on February 14th. And so everything we've seen since that is the subdivisions of um, minute wave three of minor wave one of intermediate wave three of primary wave three down. This thing should just topple like a series of dominoes once we break 4,060. Well, that's going to be a, quite a feat if they can do that. But right now, the shorter-term trend is uh, is hot, slightly up, but turning down. Is that correct? Is, is that yeah, the way it, you it interpret it? Basically, we're, I, I would re interpret it as that we've, we've topped and we're rolling over, and we just need confirmation based on a 4,060 break to the downside. A new high, if we, if we took out 4,195, then I would say that our alternate Elliott wave count has a better possibility of being valid. But, you know, there's an open chart gap at, I think, uh, 4228, and the Fibonacci 86.8% retracement, which is the square root of 786, comes in at 4230. Sometimes those numbers can be a magnet as well, so we'll see what happens here. Wow. Okay, you want to tell the folks about your monthly newsletter and some of the services that you have? Sure, absolutely. So we, we do publish a monthly newsletter. It comes out on the first Saturday of each month. So the next issue will be published on uh, March 4th. And it's free to subscribe, and we actually give a real good preview to free subscribers. You see about the first three or four pages. It's our economic outlook. And, and then we get down into our market forecast and the real nitty-gritty about what we're thinking about uh, in, in terms of uh, positioning and making recommendations, a few stock ideas, et cetera. That's all kind of below the line. You need to upgrade to paid to get that access. It's only $10 a month. I mean, it's not a huge uh, expense. Uh, we've actually uh, introduced a new lifetime membership for $500. You, you get everything we ever published for the rest of your life. You never have to renew. That's a pretty good deal. But you can find out more about it on our website at jwhinvestment.com. Just go to the newsletter tab. It'll take you right to uh, Substack, which will allow you to view uh -huh. all of our past newsletters and decide whether it's for you.
Uh, Jeff, uh, on the words of Johnny Carson, is that your lifetime or my lifetime? <laughs> That's, that was always he always he was always worried about that. So it's it's the lifetime of the person uh, living, right? I mean, that, that's subscribing. Because if you're gone, it doesn't make I'm any difference. Is that correct? <laughs> as long as I'm publishing, you get it all for free. <laughs> hey, buddy, I didn't mean to be uh, comical, but I had to keep laughing at, at my age. Hey, listen, we'll have you on again soon. May God bless. Keep up the great work, Jeff. You're a champion among champions. Believe me, you're really great. Thank, Thank you, you, Larry. I appreciate it. You too. Take you care We'll now. be right back, folks. 877-927-6648. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Okay, folks, I've got an interesting story about the number 377. When I first started to promote Astro Cycles, a trader's viewpoint, I wanted to do it with Larry Williams. But Larry said, this is too good for me to share with you. He said, you deserve all the income. But I said, how do I do it? So he gave me a list of 3,000 people that he had had, all handwritten. You know, so I had to do these hand-addressed hand envelopes with a advertisement out. And I was selling the book for $89 plus postage, which was $95. And my first caller 
on Saturday morning uh, was a Dr. Jacob Feldman from New York City. And he said, I'd like to buy the book. And he said, I'd like to buy the newsletter. I said, I don't have any newsletter. He said, well, people want to know what this is. And I said, well, how do we how do we do it? And he said, well, the book is eighty nine dollars. You add one forty four to that and you add two thirty three to that. It comes out to three hundred and seventy seven dollars for one year plus the book. Instead of selling one book, you're going to sell four and that'll make you happy. And I said, yes, it would. And he said, what kind of charge cards do you take? And I said, I don't take any charge cards. He said, how do you expect to sell anything? People are not going to send you any checks. So what I had to do within the next two hours, I had to get a bank statement set up for uh, uh, all of the different credit cards. I did that through my good friend Michael and Milton Weintraub, who owned a jewelry store in San Luis Obispo. They were furriers. And so they said everything. up. Hey, you're not going to sell very many of them. He said, just go ahead and sell them. And he said, we'll send you the money. Well, <laughs> I did okay, folks. I uh, I sold a lot. Uh, I, my goal was to sell a hundred, and I sold a lot more than a hundred. I sold well over three hundred that weekend, and we ended up having over a thousand subscribers over a period of time. But the sad part was uh, Jacob, uh, Dr. F Dr. Feldman, he passed away about three months after his daughter called me. And I said, well, I'll be happy to uh, you know, refund your money. And he said, no, no, no. She said, my father has already given us a check for three years of your service. And I said, well, I, I can't take it. She says, I'm sorry, but it's on its way. And I've always remembered him very fondly. Hey, we'll see you on the flip side tomorrow. Stay tuned. Stan Harley, Harley Markle's letter next week on for this week on Friday, Peter Lighty's next Friday.